I'm getting rid of all of this. I haven't given an update for a while because the piles got kind of out of hand last night. They were, they were pretty big and it was a little anxiety inducing, so I just handled it. So the first book that I'm getting rid of is the Oxford Book of Modern Women's Stories. I think I got this at a secondhand bookstore like five years ago. I can name at least five of their short story collections that I would rather read before opening this one up. I opened it while I was sorting through things last night. I read a little bit of Grace Paley and Interest in Life. This is just where the spine was broken. So I opened it and it fell on this story. I read the first two pages and it was good. It was, but I just have other short story collections I'd rather read. And I've had this for so long. I don't really like the cover. And I think that was part of what was giving me anxiety about looking at my bookshelves before, because when I look at it and I see all these books that I, didn't think were pretty next to all the books that I love the way they look and I know that I like the content of them it made me kind of not happy to look at them seeing the ones that were so ugly and I haven't read versus the ones that are so pretty that I was so excited to read so I'm just gonna stop lying to myself and pretend that this cover doesn't bother me because it does and we're just saying goodbye okay the second book I have is Nancy DeMoss's Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth's adorned living out the beauty of the gospel together so i got this book for my church where i had a mentor and we were supposed to like read this book alongside of our mentors and like fill it out together and honestly my mentor and i used it for like two of our meetings and then we never really used it again and i don't even really like see her much anymore so i don't think i need this and it was good while i read it but i don't think i'm going to be opening it up again i haven't opened it in like a year I put my hair up. Third, I have The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I had to read this book for a lit course last semester. I got most of the way through it. I think I had like 30 pages until the end and I don't really care to read the rest of it. I really liked the Netflix, Netflix, the HBO adaptation. That was really good. And it went further than where the book ended. So I kind of feel like I already know what there is to know about the plot of this book and the sci-fi or I don't know if you'd call this sci-fi or maybe like dystopia. This brand of genre of type of book, I just don't see myself reopening it anytime soon. And it's just super accessible to get online, like through Libby or something else. Like you can find a copy of Handmaid's Tale in like a million places. So I just don't find the need to keep this in my library. And I don't really like this cover either. Next, we have The Maltese Falcon by Dashiel Hammett. I got this for a buddy read and me and my buddy both DNF'd it. This book is also very accessible on Libby. I've seen copies of the ebook there, so I just don't feel like I need it anymore. I used to really like this lizard on it because it was the vintage crime, the vintage crime collection, which has these, I really think the lizard is still cool, but I don't like the orange. I don't like the way it looks in my, I don't know. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> Now that I'm looking at it like from the side, it's not so bad because the penguin classics that I keep are also kind of like this with orange and like the beige split cover. But I don't know, I just don't really care to read the rest of the story and my buddy read partner still has it. So I could borrow it from them. Here we have Dear Azula, I Have a Crush on Danny Hantum by Azura, Tayabi, Tayabji, and Jackson Neal. I thought I was gonna love this. I really wanted to love this. It's so short. It's just a collection of poetry about like Nickelodeon and Disney characters. And it's a very like coming of age, discovering sexuality through these cartoons kind of poetry, which sounded fun. The table of contents has like poems about Danny Phantom and Shigo, Zuko, Zula, Fiona from Shrek, Raven, I love Raven. Beast Boy, I love the Teen Titans, so like Raven and Beast Boy sounded awesome. More Zuko, more Azula, the Mrs. Incredible, and the last poem is called My Girlfriend Turns Into the Moon, which is a Sokka reference from Avatar, which is pretty funny. I don't even think I read all of them because like the few that I did read, I re just really didn't like. It didn't resonate with me at all. I actually bought this to give to a friend for her birthday, like also five years ago or <laughs> four years ago. And every time, I don't see her much. And every time I did see her, I forgot to bring this with me. And now I just feel ashamed bringing this. Like if I see her again anytime soon, I don't want to give her this work of poetry that is just not good. 
there's better poetry to give her, you know? Because she also loves these characters, but this is just gotta go. This is Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. The Heart of Christ for Sinners and Sufferers. My pastor really loves this book. He references it a lot. And the cover is really pretty, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I just got this book like a year and a half ago. Also have not really read it. I maybe read like the first chapter or so. I don't know, as I'm saying it and flipping through it, I'm like, maybe I should give it another chance, but it's been so long and I haven't, and I have other Christian books that I feel like make me more excited to read them. This might go in an undecided pile and I'll think about this some more. Then there's A Man's Journey to Simple Abundance by Sarah Ban Breathnetch and Friends. Sarah, that's really weird. I thought this was written by a man and friends. Sarah Ban Breathnetch and Friends, I don't know because it's like specifically a man's guide because there's another one that's the woman's guide. And I think this was kind of like supposed to be about minimalism, which sounded fun. Gosh, this is hard. Every time I go to explain one of these books I'm unhauling and read through a couple of like the chapter names and stuff, I suddenly want to keep it. And I suddenly, I'm like, maybe I should read this, but they've just been on my shelves for so long and I haven't. These names sound really good. A man and his hair, the best thing I ever did vision quest like father like daughter like these are just some of the the chapters the wild blue yonder heartbeat of the running dog how long are these chapters the wedding is one it's one page okay maybe i should also keep <laughs> this isn't even going to be an unhaul video this is just going to be me thinking i wanted to unhaul things and then reading through the books and realizing i think i want to keep them <laughs> but at least that got me to flip through my books and think about them more. So this is also gonna go in the maybe pile. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, this one is definitely going away. This will not be seen in my house any longer. I got this at a secondhand bookshop. The art style looks really cool. I love this like pink girl. I don't know, she just looks cool. It's basically about this girl that like wakes up one day in her regular life and suddenly she's been posted on this assassin app and like everything is about apps in the society like she gets all of her jobs through apps like she's a dog walker and she's like a cherry picker and she does a million other three things kind of like the way you like order an uber people order her services for so many things and one of the services is that you can put somebody on the assassin app and she ends up on there and there's this huge bounty on her head so then she goes on like the anti-assassin app and meets this person who's supposed to, she's like hiring to protect her. And I thought I was going to like it, but the more that I went through it, the less I was enjoying it. I just didn't really like how millennial Gen Z, I don't know, like it just felt so like, oh, we're super woke because we're talking about the apps and all that. And like apps are taking over our society. And I just wasn't really into it. So I just know I'm not reading this. Like I, I tried, I really did, but this is a no. Same thing with this graphic novel. I'm realizing that graphic novels, I have to be like super, super into the art style for me to be able to crack it open, which is like, I've been trying to read manga for months. Like every time I go to Barnes and Noble, I look through the manga section and I really want to get some. I really want to become a manga girly because I know I'm missing out on so many good stories, but I can't get over the art style. Like I just don't usually like the art style of manga and a lot of them look very similar to me that they have like a lot of black ink, but just the amount, the ratio of black to white space on the paper. Like if there was more white space so that I could see the lines more clearly, I feel like I'd be more into it, but because there's just so much shading all over, I feel like every manga I flip through, I can barely like make out what's going on and it hurts my brain. So this one is an example of the art style was not speaking to me anymore. I loved the art style and the cover. Okay, I like the art style, it's just the coloring. The coloring also matters to me a lot. So here, it looks awesome. These like warm tones, very autumnal. It's called The Autumn Lands, volume one, Tooth and Claw. It sounds really epic. It's like all these animal humanoid creatures that are like in a war. And if the whole thing was using this sort of color palette of these like reds and browns, autumn vibes, this would be a yes. The story seems cool. But when you open it up, it's like very dark. 
there's a lot of black, which is kind of like what I don't like. And it just looks like, I don't know, this just doesn't interest me. I know a lot of people can read graphic novels that just kind of have this sort of vibe, which I've seen so many with this vibe and it's just not my vibe. Another one that I opened, I read like the first 10 pages and I just couldn't get into it. The cover matters to me, but you know, the inside matters more because I can't just stare at the cover the entire read. So this is gonna be a no. I have Looking for Alaska by John Green in hardback for some reason. I don't even know how I acquired this book. I've had it for years. I think I've had this since I was like 14 years old. It's just always been in my library and I probably, whoa, I have bookmarks in here. No way, I did not even look. This is from when I was in high school taking AP Music Theory. Chunk number 13. So my my music theory pr teacher used to teach us chord progressions and call them chunks. And we had like 30 chunks that we were supposed to memorize by the end of the semester, I guess, the end of the school year so we could take the AP exam. And here's one of the chunks that I like printed out and put on a, a note card. <laughs> That's really funny that I had this in here. And what is this? I think I also have a word search. This is like for children. Why do I, this is my little sister's word search. I don't know why this is in here. That's really strange. Yeah, I took that class when I was uh, when I was 16. So I've had this at least since I was 16, which is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's five years. And I haven't opened it since then. I didn't really like the story. I don't really remember much from it. I haven't watched the movie. I've read The Fault in Our Stars. I did really like that. I do really like the movie as well. But I also read An Abundance of Catherines and that book got so much hype when I was a teen and I didn't understand it at all. I didn't understand it. I didn't like that book. I didn't like the premise. I didn't like the whole thing with all the Catherines. I didn't like the main character. Not really my vibe. I'm very interested to read the letter to the Anthropocene or a review of the Anthropocene by John Green because it's a nonfiction book that he wrote and I'm way more interested to see how he writes in that genre. But this, I just don't, care about so I'm getting rid of it and it's kind of ugly. In our last book, the book that started it all, I'm kind of sad, <laughs> kind of sad to let this one go but also not sad at all because I will never read this book again. Maybe the Wattpad. That's After by Anna Todd. This book started so much for me when I was 13. I was reading the Wattpad when it was coming out. I was obsessed with After. I read the first three books like on Wattpad before they were actually books. And then when it became books and movies, I went to see all of them. I still, I haven't watched the most recent one, which is like the one that's after, I don't want to spoil it, after Hardin finds out the thing about his dad. I'll just leave it at that. And he does some questionable things. I haven't watched past that because the movies are just terrible. Honestly, the story's not great either, but it was just such a, a big part of my like reading hood as a teenager. So it's, it'll always have a special place in my heart, but I just don't think I can stomach reading this with this man on the cover and reading the name Hardin and Zed throughout it. Like if I'm gonna read the story again, I'm gonna go to Wattpad, I'm gonna read Harry and Zane. Please let me know if Wattpad if that version was changed at all and it says Harden and Zed through there too because if that's the case I'm just never reading after again it's just never happening in other news about after lore there are graphic novels for this series as well or at least book one I saw a graphic novel at Barnes that was interesting to flip through that was interesting <laughs> yeah this is just gonna go I hate this cover I don't like the movies it's kind of cool to have it just to know like oh that one story I like spent so much time on Wattpad with like in the night while I was 13, like I would hear my mom coming through the, the house and I would like turn my phone off and hide it under the pillow because I just wanted to read all night. Just knowing that that story that meant so much to me became a book and it became a picture. It's nice to see this, like how far it came, but I just don't want this copy of it. So those are all the books that I'm getting rid of, most likely. We ended up with having these two on the maybe pile. I'm gonna think about it. These are just to be determined. We're not gonna know for now. The rest of them, they're going. Now that we've gotten over that, I can show you all the things that are left on my shelves, the things that I'm so excited to read. I separated my two shelves into the books that I've already read and things that I haven't read. 
there's a little bit more to that, more specifics, but I'll go over that as I show you now. Okay, I'm starting with the things that I have read. These are the exception that I was talking about. I haven't necessarily read all of these, but I'll get into that in a second. But from this Harry Potter over is a yes. These are things I need to return. So this is actually just my puzzle that I have. I got in a thousand piece puzzle thinking that I could just get into puzzles starting with that. Uh, didn't work out. <laughs> I have a 300 piece one now that I'm way closer to finishing. I don't know if I will ever get to the point where a thousand doesn't intimidate me, but we're holding on to it for now. I think the art is really fun. So that's staying there is kind of a book end. These are just kind of my romance books and I've just got some fantasy, fantasy romance, my stocking Jack the Ripper, my love. This is a graphic novel that I got from Barnes & Noble a few days ago. It's definitely middle grade, but it was so cute. I loved the art style in this. That's kind of what I was talking about, about how I need to really like the art style to get through it. I think the colors are just so adorable throughout this. I think the characters are super cute. I honestly recommend this book. It's really adorable. Then we have some poetry and literary fiction, actually classics. I would consider these two modern classics and then more of my classics then we have my literary fiction a memoir midnight sun i guess this should be with my romances but i wanted to put my hardbacks together right here my akatar books i haven't finished this but i didn't want to put it with my tbr stuff honestly and then i've got my illustrated harry potters this is just the dust jacket because i'm currently in the middle of a reread of the first harry potter then i've got my chamber of secrets and prisoner of azkaban and this book, Crescent City, the second book, I need to return because I want the paperbacks instead. And I haven't even started this series, like I'm still in the middle of Silver Flames, so I'm not getting to this anytime soon, so that's just gonna go. I have read the first Shadowhunters book, City of Bones. This is my friend's though, so I have to return this to her. And then this I also want to return because my friend has it, so I don't really want a copy of it anymore because they didn't rate it that great and I don't know when I'm gonna get to it, so I'd rather just borrow it from someone. This C.S. Lewis book that I'm just like leaving here because I don't wanna put it with my other books. I don't really like the color. I've got some Bibles, a journal, two journals, and some self-help and my coloring books. So this is my first shelf, really a windowsill because I don't have bookshelves in this apartment. Now this is my pride and joy. This is what I spent most of my time on last night and I think it came out so cute. Honestly, this side I think is my favorite. This little chunk right here I think is adorable. So I'll start with that. Starting with my skull with some dry flowers in it. I think that looks super cute. I've got a cookbook, some graphic novels. This book is really cool. I got it at a secondhand bookstore as well. It's called Mome and it's just got a bunch of different excerpts. Well, not excerpts, but like samplings, like short stories of different graphic novels so like this one is like a fake interview with this character yeah and they've just kind of got you can sample what sort of art style you like by these different illustrators and storytellers and based on that you can look them up and see if you want to read more by them so like these are the contenders that were featured in this issue i'm so excited to read this and read more of these to find like different artists that i like then i have my morning glory graphic novels, which I also have not started. Oh, by the way, this whole section are books that I haven't read. So I have my Morning Glory series. I've got issues one through six. I don't know why I put them up backwards, but I'll flip that eventually. And then moving to a completely different genre, I've got my Penguin Classics Black Spines first. I think they look so good next to each other. The only one I've started is the Sherwood Anderson, but I'm so excited to get into these. Then I've got some penguin orange spines. Um, this one is actually from the Orange Collection. Also super freaking pretty. I want to collect all of the orange classics. They've got this really pretty tri-fold, I guess, tri-fold design where it's got the orange, the beige, and the orange again. And the just the art style of these covers are so pretty, like the yo-yo and the goat with the little penguin. I'm obsessed with it. And then we just have some regular penguin publications. I'm most excited to read this one. This is Night at the Circus by Angela Carter. I have an Angela Carter on my other shelf, which I had to read for another lit course. It was a collection of her short stories called The Bloody Chamber, which I loved. So I'm super excited to read a full length work of hers. And then I have some more classics. 
really excited to read Mrs. Dalloway and the Pearl. These covers in particular are stunning. And I got them for like $4 each secondhand, so they're really nice. This one a kid like wrote all throughout it, which is a little annoying, but it was like $4, so I don't care. Also excited to read Comfort, Cold Comfort Farm. This is a Penguin classic. There was a black spine at that store I went to, but then there was this Penguin Deluxe Edition that is so freaking funny. Um, they've got all these really hilarious descriptions of the characters on it, and I think it's just so beautiful. Then I have my Barnes & Noble kind of hardback leather classics of my Jane Austen books. Once Upon a Broken Heart, I'm super excited to read that. The Selection, first book. Then I have the first Percy Jackson book. This cover is really cool. I have read the Percy Jackson books like in middle school, so technically I have read these, but it's been so long that I'm just kind of putting it over here on my physical TBR. And I have the special edition of The Hunger Games, first book. I've also read about half of The Hunger Games, the first book, but it's staying here. And can we take a second to look at the Once Upon a Broken Heart cover? So pretty. Then we have the Cruel Prince trilogy that I think I'm going to do a 24 hour reading vlog to try and like get through the entire trilogy and give you my thoughts. The fifth season, I got this secondhand. I was so hyped to find it because I've heard good things and I got it for like half price. Hunting Prince Dracula. I love stalking Jack the Ripper, so I'm super excited to get into the second book. The Cursed Princess Club. This is another graphic novel that I actually love the art of. Then we have Coraline, The Secret History, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, which I think looks adorable and the illustrations inside are so cute. I'm so hyped to read this because I really liked Because of Winn Dixie when I was a kid and I want to read all of her books now. I've just been super into middle grade lately and they're just really fun. I have started You Are a Badass, but I thought it looked good with these yellows, so I'm leaving it over here. I didn't finish it, so I think it belongs. Bunny, Book Lovers, some NYRBs, my Jennifer Egan, look at me. I love Jennifer Egan. I have a visit to the, a visit from the Goon Squad on my other shelf. I have read half of this, so I'm excited to get through the rest of it. And then I have some Colleen Hoover, other like YA stuff, short stories, some poetry, more poetry, Helium by Rudy Francisco. Rudy Francisco is my favorite poet. I have read some of this, but I haven't finished it yet. And I have my Wordsworth edition children's classic hardbacks that are just so pretty right here. I did end up keeping them and some more hardback memoirs. So here's an overview one more time. Oh, I forgot to show you. These are my Lego flowers. I had so much fun putting this together. I do have one more Lego set that I'm going to put together. This is the other Lego set that I'm gonna do. It's the what are they called? The Thestrals from Harry Potter 4? 5? It's from 5. The Order of the Phoenix. So very excited for that. I think I had it sideways before. Yes, so that you can't see it. Update. I completed the second Lego set, my Thestrals. So we've got the big mama Thestral and the baby right here. Super cute. Then we have this tree. <laughs> I made it a Christmas tree of sorts where I added all the extra pieces they give you in the Lego set to the top as like ornaments. So there's like two wands up there and some extra twigs and stuff. There's a little mushroom and a flower. Um, I just didn't know what to do with the extra pieces that they gave you because I think those are extra pieces. I hope they weren't needed for something. Um, yeah, so I just stuck them in the tree. And we've got Luna and Harry sitting in the carriage. He's got a little apple. She's got her quibbler and a little notebook. Super cute. Uh, I forgot to film an outro before, so thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe for more, and I hope you have a great day. Bye, guys. Oh, bye, guys. <laughs> no! Oh, fuck. I fixed it.